The second thing we're gonna do to hopefully figure out a little bit better which of these models are good and which are bad is we are gonna run them through a heavier load test than this is per putting them through. Uh, this is putting about 0.7 amps discharge on the batteries. I'm hoping to put about five or six amps uh, on them and what we are gonna do is time that and see how long it takes the voltage to drop on the batteries. Uh, and I think that's going to give us a pretty good idea of the health of these modules. Okay, so let's take a look at my load tester here that I have just hooked up. All we have is two wires coming off of this light bulb. One wire is hooked to the negative terminal. The other wire is hooked to both of these terminals that go to the filaments. Uh, then I have the negative wire which is this one run through this switch and then it comes out right here and the positive wire comes out right here. So all you would do is take these two with alligator clips on these and you would just attach your negative to the negative side of your module, positive to the positive side of the module. All right, so here's how to hook this bulb up. This is pretty janky, but you know, doesn't need to be anything special. Um, the negative is going to this terminal on the left, and then these are the high and low beams over here on the right. And there we go. Uh, and I also have this connected up to, the, my, to my multimeter right here, which has an amperage setting, so we can see how many amps we're drawing. All right, and then with uh, both filaments actually connected now, we are drawing about four and three quarter amps, it looks like. And uh, there's different ways that you can do load testing. Uh, I think I'm just gonna do a 60 second load test and see what the voltage sits at after that. So basically what we're gonna do is we are going to put a four and three quarter amp load on these battery modules and see how, uh, where the voltage drops to after 60 seconds. Okay, so we're going to record the start, which is 7.93. Okay. And I'm going to open up our stopwatch again. And we're going to hit go. This guy is starting off right at 8 volts, and we're going to pull up our timer, and here we go. this and then we will take a look at the differences in voltage before and after the load test and see if we can help use that to determine the health of this of these modules all right so here we are looking at our uh, chart for the load testing this is just the um, capacities that have been copied from the original chart uh, so all we need to look at here is our start and end voltages. And all we did here is I recorded the voltage before applying the load, as you see in the video. And then I recorded the voltage just before disconnecting the load right at the end of one minute. And then over here, we have just subtracted that number or this number from that number to get our voltage differential. And then here, we literally have just taken that number and divided by 4.74, which I believe is a formula to get the resistance or the internal resistance of the battery. So with a good battery, what we're looking for is a pretty low internal resistance, 
but actually primarily we are looking for a uh, very even and consistent internal resistance across all the modules. And so you can see with these original modules, we're at 0 0.57, 0 0.59, 0 0.57, 0 0.61, 0.58. So we have a lot of these that are pretty close to each other, a lot at 0 0.57, 0 0.58. And then if you look at some of these newer modules that had been replaced, I marked these ones. These are the ones with white paint. You can see that those are a bit higher. You can see several here that are a bit higher. Uh, I think those are ones that we're actually replacing. Uh, and then you can see this failed module here that we're also replacing that has way high internal resistance. And um, when we are replacing modules in here, we're gonna look for values that are as close as possible. Now, I'm going to explain later that really the ideal situation would be to actually graph the discharge capacity over time, as well as graph the voltage differential over time, um, and then graph the internal resistance as well because these are not uh, necessarily static values they change over the charge cycle uh, in the same way that the battery may have a 6500 milliamp hour capacity however uh, that is not dispersed evenly over the entire charge state so if we have two modules that are approximately the same capacity 6300 and 6500 milliamps uh, milliamp hours However, this module contains half that capacity in the upper quarter of its charge state, while this one has that same cap capacity at its uh, upper half of its charge state. There's going to be a problem because we're going to have some uh, tension between these two. So last night we went and picked up a second Prius battery, got this whole thing for 160 bucks. The car that it came from had about 170,000 miles. This one had 195. So I think that these should match up pretty well with these modules, I'm hoping. Okay, so we are just gonna do some internal resistance tests on a few of these modules here. Um, that is going to give us a good indication of what we wanna match up with the modules in this pack over here. I am gonna go through this pack really quick and just uh, throw a number on each of these modules. Okay, number nine, our initial voltage, 7.54. And we are gonna load up our test here. And we're gonna go three, two, one, go. And we are gonna watch and see where we're at after one minute. Okay, and here we go, and 9.5, That gives us 0.59, which is right on with what we need. So we've got a 0 0.59, 0 0.57, 0.6, those are all good. I think we'll just go ahead and use those. So we're just gonna start by tipping this up on end. And there are a bunch of eight millimeter bolts here. And we're just gonna pop all these out. They can all be removed really quickly. Yeah. All right, now it's going back down. All right, now we can take off these bolts here. These appear to be 12 millimeter. Let's see. Yep.
If you look in here, there's a ton of dog hair. Got it. We're going to want to take 13. We'll just go ahead and take that one. 13. And... Nine and six, maybe. Those all seem pretty good. There's a little temperature sensor in this guy here. Tons of dog hair in here, which is probably why this pack failed probably clogged the cooling fan and then the ducting in between all these modules. You can see all this dog hair. The farther we get towards the end, the more it starts to build up. Right, now we need to figure out our order. Okay, so here we are just looking at uh, my chart that I used for matching all the modules together. Basically what I chose to do is tried to um, match pairs of modules together so that uh, each pair basically has almost the same internal resistance value. Um, because remember, the car sees uh, only sees pairs. Um, it doesn't see any smaller values. So here's the module numbers, and I just pulled these numbers from uh, the other two charts. Uh, this is the new battery, this is the old battery, and these are the corresponding internal resistance values. And so you can see that we've basically just added 0.63 to 0.55 uh, to get 1.18, and um, that's the pair total. And basically just went down this whole list to try to get these as close as possible, uh, which we did a pretty good job of that. However, uh, I do think there are some issues with this. Um, the reason that we want all of these values to be this, you know, that we want them to be the same is because uh, the pack kind of starts pulling itself apart. Uh, it starts overcharging and destroying some of the modules uh, that end up being out of sync with the rest. Uh, so that's why we want them to be all the same. And so in a sense, um, the number that the computer is seeing doesn't really matter that much because the, um, the car charges the pack as a whole. Uh, so basically what we've done here is not really going to be very effective in my opinion. It might actually cause some harm because we have essentially uh, just tricked the car into thinking that uh, all the modules in the pack are closer than they actually are. Now I'm not sure, you know, basically having these numbers be this far off may or may not actually be any sort of an issue, I'm not sure. Um, but I can say that um, matching them up like this uh, and tricking the car into thinking that all of them are, you know, within a closer spec than they actually are, uh, I don't think is effective. Uh, and then once again, um, as far as matching and lining up all of these go, um, I still kind of think that these numbers are more or less taking a shot in the dark because this is just a single data point uh, in what really needs to be um, more of a graph. So what I would really suggest actually is um, graphing the internal resistance uh, as well as the uh, charge capacity or discharge capacities and then making your decisions based on that uh, and just seeing how close all of your modules are. Um, because I think that's what's going to make the biggest difference is having all of those graphs line up so that at every charge state your uh, pack is working uh, in tandem and in sync with each other.